Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, June 29th. Okay, so we have the moon in Aries all day. This is going to put a pep in our step. Emotionally speaking, we are bossing up. We are opening up a brand new chapter. We just had the last quarter moon pop off in this Aries energy, putting us in a situation to truly accept the terms, the circumstances of this last month of the ever changing landscape of our physical realm of our relationship dynamics. And now this Aries energy is ripping the rearview mirror off of the car, so to speak. We have no want, need, or desire to look back. I think we've done enough of that. I know we're still in cancer season, so there is this strong pull to the past. However, the moon in Aries energy just wants to move on. We want to move forward. We just want to take action. We want to make moves to break away from some of the things that have had us overly attached to the past. We just want to start fresh. Now, that being said, Saturn, the Lord of Karma, is going retrograde today, meaning there's a heaviness, there's a weight, there is a pressure, there's a negative narrative, there's a struggle that is still very much alive and well in the background of our, let's call it, inner narrative and emotional landscape. Although the Aries energy wants us to charge forward, that Saturn retrograde energy is pulling us back, pulling us inward, because now we have to reflect back over the last year. We have to go back to this time last year, all that has changed since that time. Karma is essentially being dealt out. We just came into the solstice energy with cancer season. We went smack dab into a full moon that Saturn rules over. And now halfway between the first full moon in Capricorn and the second full moon in Capricorn taking place at the end of cancer season, we have the Lord of Karma going retrograde. Please take a listen to the Astro Forecast that I put out for this event. And if you have your Cancer Season e-guide, please flip to this event. Capture what is going on for you. Did you learn your lesson? Are there new roles and responsibilities for you to boss up into? This is a reorganization, a restructuring from now until the fall. Cleaning up the mess, cleaning up the debris of the past, and essentially building the new framework for us to be moving on, moving forward in new karmic chapters. So there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. Right out of the gate, we have the moon in this Aries energy coming up to, teaming up with, bumping into the north node in Aries energy. So first of all, a conjunction is just as much an ending as it is a beginning. What we're ending is the confusion. Now, for those of you that think that this happens at the snap of your fingers, you're going to need to kind of, you know, pull back and have a little bit of patience. The energy gets activated. It does take some time to actually be realized, to actually come into form here in this physical realm. But the ending is the confusion. The ending is this paralyzed state this transitional period that we're in, not knowing which way to go, not knowing left from right, not knowing up from down. The beginning part is growth. We are starting to come to a certain term of acceptance of our circumstances, the role in which we played in those particular timelines and storylines. And now we are open to change. We are open to growth. We are open to evolving. We are open to trying something new. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this cancer energy is going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over physical energy, drive, passion, action, desire, even our anger, who happens to be in Taurus energy. So Venus rules over the Taurus energy that Mars is in. We're essentially talking about the masculine and feminine energies that we all have within us, that we all have in a certain energetic exchange with each and every single person that we have some sort of relationship with. Now, first of all, 
This is a harmonious aspect. So this is going to kind of give us a gentle nudge. This is going to encourage us and inspire us to realize where it is that A, we are actively trying to achieve balance within our emotional realm and our exterior realm. And B, where it is that we found a certain sense of balance, especially compared to some of the ups and downs that we've been having over the last month or so. This is putting us in a totally different mind space of understanding what it is that we want to do, what we want to pursue, again, Mars energy, and what it is that we're being kind of called flowing towards this next point of potential. That's the Venus energy. That's the feminine energy. So Mars, masculine, is going out in the world, taking action, making moves, is in a new pursuit of happiness, of, you know, money, of relationships, whatever the new goal, whatever the new purpose is, the way that we assert ourselves after said goal, vision, and dream, that's Mars's energy. Venus's energy is emotional. It's intuitive. It's understanding where it is that we have to strike a balance between going out in the world and pursuing a new path and where it is that we have to stay still and attract the situations and circumstances that we desire to us. So although this is going to manifest within our own individual selves, really recognizing where it is that maybe we have to pump the brakes on the masculine and let the feminine take control or vice versa, we're also going to see this particular energy manifest in our relationship dynamics. And so again, there could be a new level of passion, a new level of desire, a new level of romance that we want to seek out for ourselves. But this could also be just realizing what it is that we want to build, what we want to create in our physical realms in order to make us happy, to bring us a sense of safety, security, to really put us in a more stable type of situation. It is very much putting into perspective where it is that there needs to be a green light to go ahead and where it is that there needs to be a red light in order to pause and take in where it is that we're currently at and what it is that we're trying to pursue and what it is that we need to stand still and allow flow to us. This is a very, I'm going to call it beneficial energy to pay attention to who is coming, who is going in your physical realm as far as friendships, relationships, interactions go. This is also a realization on, again, new wants, needs, and desires that are coming to the surface of our awareness now that we are essentially disconnecting from the past and some of those particular storylines. And it is definitely a time where we're starting to realize what we're passionate about, what means the most to us. Again, we're in cancer season where it comes down to the quality of our life, what our values are, what it is that we need to feel safe and secure within ourselves and in the relationship dynamics that we're choosing to pour time, energy and attention into. So this is definitely going to open up some doors create new options, create new opportunities, create new level of awareness on what our heart and head, what our soul self needs us to do, needs us to pursue. The moon in Aries energy then going to make a very positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. I love this because this is boss up energy. We're tapping into a boldness, a bravery, a courage that we've been lacking over the last couple of weeks. We are, again, a little bit of a fire starter. We are aggressively really attacking our inner realm of thoughts and emotions from a new level of awareness and aggression in order for us to change and transform the boss up, to be in a new level of empowerment, to be in a new mood, in a new attitude, that warrior type of spirit, just start pushing through the blockages, the challenges that we're currently facing while trying to break away from the old and trying to get very much closer to these new visions, this new goal, this new dream, this new prospect that is definitely triggering and activating a new passion, new desire within us. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. So Mars rules over the Aries energy that the moon is currently in. So this is going to be an intense interaction. It is a positive one, which means that we're bossing up. We're being inspired. There's a new level of motivation, a new level of determination. Things are becoming a little bit more clear on what it is that we need to do to actually start taking action, making moves into the future. 
into this new path, in this new direction. Now, granted, there is an impulsivity that comes with both Mars and Aries energy. So emotionally speaking, we want to hit that fast forward button. Now, problem with that is that Mars being in Taurus energy is an Earth energy. It's a fixed Earth energy, which means that it's a very low, slow, steady pace. We are not going anywhere fast, okay? It's not the speed that is important. It is the direction that we are walking. A baby step in the right path, in the right direction is much more valuable than taking action and making moves at a great speed with no real clear target goal, dream, vision, and sight. So this is going to kind of boss us up again, get the inner realm of spark, fires, and flame cultivated to a proper type of energy in order for us to see through the blockages, the challenges that 100% are standing in our way while we are attempting to pivot from the past, from those old storylines, from those old soul contracts, and into brand new foreign territory. So... Up until this point, we've had some positive energies. And if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that just when we're feeling good, just when there's a certain amount of clarity, just when we are feeling like we can take over the world, the darker forces come back out to play. That egoic programming, that pain and trauma narrative kicks in to try to keep us in a state of paralysis. The moon in Aries energy, then going to get into the boxing ring square off with Venus. Venus again in cancer energy, all up in the fields. Very nostalgic and romanticizing the past, but equally figuring out what it is that she needs to do to build a certain amount of safety, security, and stability in her physical realm and in her emotional realm as well. Emotionally speaking, we are very confused at this particular point in time on what it is that we actually need. Why? Because we get sucked back into looking at what could have been. Again, until we get to the new moon in Cancer energy, which is going to take place July 5th, we are, let's call it, more dominant in being attached to the past and looking back than we are in the present moment than we are looking towards the future. That new moon is going to be the pivot point where we finally release the attachments to the past and we, we can finally step into this present moment and start contemplating how to move forward. But of course, we're not there yet. So we're going to be very unsure and uncertain on what it is that we need for ourselves to feel good, to feel safe, to feel secure. We are going to be very unsure, almost angered, agitated, if you will, that we're even in this confusion, that we're even in this transitional period, that we're even in this time and space to have to realize what is not working out according to the way that we wished it would and what we have to come to a certain term of acceptance about before we can provide a certain amount of closure that is going to release the connection and the hold to the past. Does it feel good? Absolutely not. Is it supposed to? 100% no. But we're going to to learn a lot through this very bumpy transition. Now we're going to continue the not so nice thoughts and feels because Mars, the god of war, is going to semi-square Neptune. So Neptune is in his place of power in the Pisces energy at 29 degrees, a karmic critical crisis degree. Neptune will be going retrograde July 2nd. So again, July's energy forecast coming at you here over the next couple of days. This particular interaction is going to stir up a lot of confusion, a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity. Suddenly we are losing confidence. We're losing that clarity. We are unsure of what it is that we're passionate about, what it is that we actually desire. We don't know how to actually pursue the things that we know that we want. And because of that, we are very low on inspiration and we're a little bit whiny and we're ready to give up and we just want to break down and cry. Okay, so what is actually happening here is a realization that our soul needs a break. We need a little bit of a renewal. We need a little bit of a refresher. 
And there are a lot of situations and circumstances right now that we have not prepared for, that we couldn't have prepared for, that we have very unrealistic expectations of. And let's just be real with it. Nobody enjoys adjustments. Nobody enjoys change. Nobody enjoys transitional periods. The old isn't quite gone. The new isn't here yet. We're in a state of confusion on which way to go. Our feels are overwhelming at this particular point. And basically what we need to do is we need to take a time out. We need to rest. We need to recuperate. We need to find a refresher, a renewal for our soul and spirit before we actually push ourselves to move on and to move forward. 1.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturn is going retrograde again. Listen to the forecast, get your Cancer Season e-guide out. There is the Zodiac forecast for June that you can take a listen to to understand where this is going to be happening in your life. But basically, the first week or two of these heavy hitting planets actually going retrograde, that is the bumpiest of time. And again, this is going to be carrying us into the fall. We are going to see these heavy hitting planets one by one come older their retrograde just as we are thrown into a next eclipse season okay so moving on just a couple of minutes later the moon is then going to make a positive interaction with saturn who is now retrograde this is definitely putting us in a different mood a different attitude to understand where it is that we're a little bit broken in our inner realm we need to kind of make some changes make some adjustments especially to our perspective in order for us to understand that we're bossing up that we're restructuring our inner realm to accept the changes that we're not able to do anything about out in the outer realm this is a pep in our step this is an aggressive energy for us to boss up and kind of accept the challenge if you will of the tough love life lessons that saturn is about to throw our way the moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who's in this Gemini energy. Again, dividing us, putting us on the fence, making us feel torn about two very different choices, different directions, different options. Now, one is becoming very clear that we cannot go back to, and the other is becoming very clear that it is the more desirable option and path for us to be pursuing at this time, but we're not feeling well-equipped, well-prepared to actually pursue said path. Again, we need to take a rest. We need to be building ourselves up in self-confidence, in self-love, in self-worth, in self-deserving before before we're going to have the physical energy, the emotional and mental capabilities of actually jumping into new foreign territory. Give yourself the break. Give yourself the, let's call it, permission to not pressurize yourself to fix everything now. Okay, Rome wasn't built in a day. Your life didn't fall apart in a day. There is going to need to be a little bit of time between letting the old, the past, the karmic chapters that are no longer serving us. It's going to take some time to let that go. It's also going to take some time to build us up to a new version of self where we have the power, the focus, the dexterity to actually move on and move forward. The moon is then going to come up to bump into team up with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. Again, a conjunction means that there's an ending point. There's a beginning point. The ending point is that we're closing the door on some of those wounds. We're not really wanting to sit in this victimhood mentality any longer. We don't really want to whine and cry anymore. We want to bring the wounds. We want to bring the pain and trauma to a certain ending point. The beginning point that comes out of this is that we're willing to grow. We're willing to improve. We're willing to take a good look at the shit show circumstances that we're currently in and we're willing to adopt a perspective that we, our higher self, have chosen these particular struggles in order to push us into a placement of power. It's us realizing that the challenges that we're currently facing are divinely scripted in order for us to get to know thyself. The, the strength within us, the confidence within us, the light within us, the passion, the desire within us, but we have to close the door to the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, that victimhood mentality, that whiny, complainy side of self in order for us to boss up into the warrior spirit 
The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this cancer energy, again, blending our intellect with our intuition, making us a little bit more focused on how it is that we can be building ourselves up, providing ourselves with the safety, security, stability that, again, we haven't been receiving in our physical realms. Mercury is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. So first of all, Uranus is the highest form of our intellect that connects us with the divine realms of intelligence. It's where we receive levels of awareness, where we bump ourselves up to new levels of consciousness, where we're able to see things from a different set of eyes, where we get light bulb moments, epiphanies that totally change the game. Mercury, on the other hand, rules over the lower level of our intellect connected to the egoic programming that very much connects to plucking information from our physical materialistic realm. And only from that information do we formulate thoughts, ideas, opinions, and perspectives. So to have the highest form of our intellect, the lower form of our intellect working together, you best believe that there's going to be some pop-offs, amazing ideas, change in perspectives. And even more than that, it's going to encourage us to think outside of the box. It's going to put us in a situation where we realize if we continue doing the same old, same old, we're only ever going to get what it is that we've already got. We cannot continue to do the same old, same old thing and expect a different result. So this particular energy putting us in a situation to tap into our intuition, to download information from the higher realms, to see epiphanies, light bulb moments, aha moments, pop off, inspiring us, giving us new perspectives, new ideas to work with, taking us to a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness so that we understand the struggle that we're going through from a spiritual level. This is going to open us up to seeing solutions where there's been problems. This is going to inspire us to try new methods, new ways of living, new ways of thinking, new ways of expressing, new ways of actually interacting with the world around us. This is the spice that we need to add back into our life in order to get out of the mundane, same old, same old routine. This is going to definitely put us in a situation where things are about to get interesting, where things are about to get exciting, where things are about to get inspiring, when we can grasp the vision, the goal, the dream that our higher self now wants us to pursue. Mm -hmm.